a few key differences between this downturn in the economy and prior ones. In prior recessions, we saw an almost immediate upturn in bankruptcy work, in litigation, and frankly, in prior downturns, uh, the drop-off in transactional work for most law firms was immediately covered by the upturn in litigation, and litigation actually carried a lot of law firms over the last oh, five years or so since the last recession. This time things are a little bit different. Um, we haven't seen the immediate upturn in bankruptcy work it's slowly building. Um, we certainly have law firms that are busy, but not like previously. And second, we've had an unusual trend on litigation. In the last one to two years uh, in major litigation markets in the United States, there's been a slow decline in litigation. And this time, we haven't seen the return either. There's a general wariness among a lot of clients these days who are very disenfranchised with uh, the whole litigation process. It's becoming radically more expensive. Um, law firms have increased their billing rates substantially over the last few years. Uh, we've had recent examples where clients of law firms are now reporting that a case that five years ago took a certain amount of money to handle that exa exact same type of case might have gone up almost 500 percent in cost in just five years due to a, a number of different you know, <coughs> issues. One is the rise in billing rates. Two is uh, the skyrocketing costs of e-discovery. Um, just a, a completely uncontrollable cost. Third, probably the problems associated with arbitration. You know, many companies thought arbitration was a great way to avoid litigation. What they've discovered is it's practically as expensive, and if you lose, you can't appeal. So those have been some of the, the trends related to bankruptcy and litigation. I think there's some other important trends in the United States in particular that have made this recession a little bit different than what we've seen before, and that has to do with some of the changes that we've seen in the worldwide economy, the advent of technology, the freeing up of restrictions on trade. You know, you look at the growth in the EU, the growth in Asia. Um, it's now much more possible for firms to operate worldwide without the restrictions that they faced previously. And one of the things that's happening is that instead of the U.S. being the dominant economy in the world, there's starting to be some challengers. The EU is a, an, a, a critically important economy. Asia, China in particular, likewise, a very important economy. And that's drawing work away from the United States or f creating other opportunities. Now, again, some firms have been really forward thinking. They've taken advantage of those opportunities. They've made investments over the last five years. Kind of interesting thing that we're seeing right now is in the last year, the firms that had significant operations in Europe and in Asia did significantly better from a financial standpoint than the firms that were just concentrated in the United States. The more successful law firms that we see these days uh, are probably focusing their efforts in a, a few areas. One is they are probably taking a much more aggressive view than they have in the past on restructuring their firms. You know, the truth is We've gone through five fabulous years where most law firms have had record profits year after year. And what's happening now is uh, a lot of firms are realizing, like most businesses everywhere, when you have really good times, money's not an issue, you grow excessively, you get lax in the way you control your expenses. So obviously we're seeing, as almost everybody would expect, firms cutting back on their expenses. The more successful firms, however, are doing a combination of expense cutting, but also realizing that in a downturned economy, this may be an ideal time to go out there and do more recruiting, pick off more lateral partners, uh, realign their strategy um, around sort of key practice areas. Probably one of the toughest things we're seeing firms do is deal with their expense problem, not in their operating <coughs> expenses, but the expense problem that has to do with the fact that they've got too many lawyers. The m interesting thing about the most successful firms when they start out cutting lawyers, they don't start out cutting associates and they don't cut income partners. They've learned over and over again. The key is we should look at the core practice areas that we're in. If we've gotten ourselves into practice areas that despite two or three years of investment, they're just not working out for us, maybe what we should, we should really be doing is cutting our equity partners. And that has a much more significant impact. After all, cutting associates who don't have the ability to go out and generate any work um, doesn't make a lot of sense if you have enough associate level work 
already in the firm. And what a lot of firms discover is they actually have equity partners doing associate level work. So if we have the associates do it rather than the equity partners do it, we make more money. And frankly, it's also better for morale you know, in the long term, having appropriate people do the right work. I think probably the other thing that we're seeing among more successful firms are that they are much more expansive in their view about where they should be concentrating their growth efforts. Uh, they're much more liberal these days than they have been in the past in terms of instead of thinking just about the U.S. as being the center of the world, um, there are other economies where they can make more money than in the United States. So we're seeing a really significant upturn in their investments in Europe, in Asia. Um, again, among the more successful firms, they're not just opening an office, but opening an office with depth, um, using more foreign nationals to staff those project, those offices, because that's what's proven to be successful over and over again. Growing diversification in geography, there is there are as many opportunities outside the United States as there are inside the United States. The key is to ask yourself, are you capable of actually going somewhere else in the world and opening up an office and competing successfully? Too many law firms hear that China is a great place. There's great opportunities there. And they half-heartedly open an office there. That's not going to do anything other than suck the profits out of your firm. Um, another trend that we see is uh, there's an immense interest in mergers. Um, and we see probably as many bad mergers of law firms as we see good mergers of law firms. Um, one of the troubling aspects is many people look at the MLAW statistics. They sit back and they say, well, large firms seem to be doing better, um, and so therefore we should grow. What oftentimes escapes many of those firms is they uh, confuse the concept of size with depth. Uh, we can show you many examples of firms that have gotten really large are not doing significantly better on a financial basis because what they did was they added depth, they added more practice areas, but they didn't build enough depth in any pr one practice area to really be noticed on a <coughs> national scale or international scale. They don't have enough depth in those practice areas to effectively compete with whoever are the very best players in the marketplace. So there is a great deal of interest in mergers. You've got to be careful. Merge for the right reasons, to build depth, to make sure that if you do pick up an office somewhere else, that you can actually integrate them. It doesn't do you any good to just have an office with your name on the door in some other location if you don't interact with them, uh, if you can't share clients with them. Probably another trend that um, we'd be focusing on these days, and uh, it gets a lot of attention for um, political reasons, and that is the growth of minorities and women in the profession. Um, you know, you look at graduating law school classes these days, more than half are women. And a lot of law firms sit back and say, we need to make sure that we're going out there and recruiting and, and keeping these people to build up our partnership because our clients are telling us uh, that it's important to them. That's absolutely true. There's a longer term issue here that's a little bit more subtle, and that is one of the facts of life is clients tend to hire their peers. Most human beings hire people that they're comfortable with, people that they relate well to, that they communicate well with. And as we see more women and minorities achieving the very highest levels of corporate ranks, <coughs> guess what? If your law firm is sitting back and is composed of largely you know, older Caucasian males, you don't reflect your client base anymore. And as a result, you'll probably be competitively disadvantaged, especially as you start looking to go overseas. You know, do we hire foreign nationals to staff those offices, or do we transplant people from the United States? Um, those are some of the issues that we see going on these days.